Welcome back to this second video on storytelling. In this video, I wanna give you eight tips that I've extracted from my personal experience and from other resources like books and things like that. So here we go. The first point is called the Ziganic effect. Now I'm not gonna tell you what that is now, I'm gonna tell you what it is at the end of the video in ironic fashion. The second point is know your audience. It's very important to know who you're going to be presenting to. That way when we move to step three, which is the planning part, you know how to plan. Give you a very simple example. If you're talking to a colleague at work, you talk to them in a different way to the way you talk to your children. You talk to your children in a different way you talk to your wife. I certainly don't mean that you treat people differently in terms of respect, no. There are more effective ways of communicating with different types of people. So knowing your audience and knowing the message that they're used to, the sort of nuance that you have to put into that message, maybe what they want to hear. I'm not saying you tell them what they want to hear, but maybe you know what they typically want to hear, what they're pre-suaded with, what they're pre-loaded with, and what their expectations are. Very important to know your audience. And quite frankly, the more you know about psychology, the better it is, because then you can tailor that message even better. The third point is to plan, plan your story. Now this advice I took from the book that I'm gonna flash up on the screen here, basically a book about Steve Jobs and how he would present, and they've extracted some of the key points, the repeating factors about what he did in his planning stages and in, in his presentations. So planning is very important, and when I've had a successful presentation that either I've delivered myself or prepared for somebody else, that planning stage is, is extremely important just to do like a little storyboard even if it's just on a sheet of A4 paper I just usually put put some themes these are the themes I want to go through like what problem am I trying to solve and so on and so forth and then the conclusion however you want to break it down but this helps you in your mind to come up with the story this is where the story is actually formed and then as you go through it and you sit back and look at it again you can say oh, that doesn't make sense and then go back to point number two, is this appropriate for the audience that I'm presenting to? Then you can tune it and tweak it a little bit before you start getting into the actual meat of it. Point number four, the best way to start a story. Now, I came across this advice which really resonated with me on a YouTube video somewhere. Kudos to whoever it was that I heard it from. The best way to start a story is once upon a time. As I said in the previous video, us human beings, we love stories, and most of the stories we heard in childhood, which is where we learn to love storytelling, I believe, they start with once upon a time. And there's a really interesting Arabic expression, which means knowledge that you gain when you're young is like a score, like a scratch on a rock. It never goes away, it's, it's there permanently. Now point number five is a really important point if you're preparing a presentation or maybe a keynote speech. You have to make sure that you answer the question, what problem am I trying to solve? And the second question, how do I solve it? And answering this question for yourself before you go into the presentation is extremely useful. Because if you, especially if you have tables and tables of figures or something like that, you have to make sure that you've done the work before the presentation so that you know what the figures are actually telling, what story these figures are telling. That has to be very, very clear in your mind and you have to then answer the question, what's the issue, how am I gonna solve it? This will give the people that you're presenting to confidence that you know exactly what's going on, for example, in your business and what you're gonna do about it. Now, point number six is a really, really powerful point, which to be honest, I've only just realized. Create Twitter-like headlines. It's fascinating how simple that approach is and how much impact it has. Number one on the presenter, because if you just glance at the slide, you know the story that that slide is telling you from that headline. You don't just wanna have like a simple three or four words at the top just because that's the way the slides are are supposed to be, you know, everything's supposed to be like this. No, there's no supposed to be. That slide, what is it saying? That should be in the headline, the story that it's saying. This helps you as a presenter. If you get nerves, you can just look at the headline and say, oh yeah, this is what this is the slide about, this part of the story. And then you can talk about that slide. It also helps the audience to look and say, what's the headline here? There's a, an art to this. How do I make that headline? As my manager always says, you ask the question to yourself, so what? When you read the headline, so what? It's got to answer that question, so what? Very, very powerful approach. So moving on to tip number seven, uh, and this is something, again, illustrated by the way Steve Jobs, for example, used to deliver his presentations. He would put roadmaps into his storyline. So how am I going to address this issue? I'm going to do one, two, three. How are we going to solve that problem? I'm going to do A, B, C. And he would typically do it in threes. He would use what they call the rule of threes. A uh, classic example is when Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone. He talked about accessing the internet, number one. He talked about having a phone device, number two. 
and then he talked about having something that could act like an iPod. And that's when he wowed the audience and brought out the iPhone and said, and this can do all three in one device. And everyone was totally blown away. These kind of things really help to deliver the story with more impact to the audience. Now, point number eight is kind of obvious, but I'll point it out anyway. Practice, practice, practice. When you're going to do a presentation, you need to have practiced it. You need to know what your story is. Some of the best presentations I've ever seen have been by people that have given the same presentation hundreds of times. The thing is, you're seeing that person present it for the first time. So for you, it's, it's brand new. But if that person has delivered the presentation 100 times, you'll see a flawless performance almost because they're so confident with the material. It's gone down well with other audiences. And again, this shows the importance of practice. Stand-up comedians do the same thing. They spend months and months writing material. And then what they do is they just practice and practice and practice. The first night, they see how the audience reacts. They go and try it with someone else. They go and try it with someone else. But the point is they've spent a lot of time preparing, a lot of time practicing. And then when they deliver it, they go from place to place to place, delivering exactly the same routine. Obviously, in most cases, if you're giving a presentation, it might be just a one-off. So it's gonna be difficult to practice it you know, 100 times, but at least what works for me anyway, is I, I go into a room quiet by myself and if it, I present to the wall and just talk about what I'm gonna talk about. It sets your mind up to know the presentation, to know what you want to say, the message you want to deliver, the story and the answer to those two questions as I mentioned earlier is very very important. I hope you've all stayed with me long enough to try and figure out what the Zeganic effect is and you haven't uh, stopped and googled it before. Uh, it's, it's something that you can use in your presentations to keep people hooked. You mentioned something at the start uh, that you will shed light on at the end. What it's about is we seldom forget unfinished tasks. If something is open, we want to close it. That's how our minds tend to work. For example, in this case, I tell you something at the start, this obscure named effect. And if you haven't looked it up on Google, you'll be thinking to yourself, yeah, I'd quite like to know what that is actually. You see that in a lot of YouTube videos. People say things like, stay till the end. If you want a big surprise, you're really gonna want to stay till the end of this video. If you don't stay to the end of the video, you'll regret it. And it's basic psychology. If there is a, an open task which needs to be closed, it's gonna stay in your mind until you close it. And that technique is quite user-friendly for making stories, to be honest. So that's why I put it in there. I'm looking forward to seeing if this is useful to you guys. Um, please do let me know. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.